Jones Show, an inside look at Oklahoma State University Cowboy football. Brought to you by Johnsons of Kingfisher and Chickasha, your Dodge Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pat Jones Show. Uh, I think every coach in the country would like to start the season with a good defense, followed by good offense and a good kicking game. Oklahoma State opened their season on September 1st at home against their interstate rival Tulsa. And Coach Jones, you got good effort in all three phases of, uh, of the game, and you, and you won the season opener 10-3. to Pretty good way to start. Well, yeah, huh? Robbie, the main thing, every coach in America wants to open with a win, <laughs> yeah, right. which we did. We right. got done. Now, I was, I was really proud of the way we, we went about things. I think the, we talked a lot about conditioning. We'd really hammered our guys. And, mm -hmm. Uh, we were in good shape. I think that was might have been the deciding factor. Uh, defensively, played extremely well. I, I, beyond really what I thought we would do. I, I thought we had a little bit more quickness going for us. I thought we had a little bit better speed. Some of those young guys, I wasn't really sure how they would react. Obviously, they did. They reacted very positively. Kicking game phases all went pretty good. Sputtered around a little bit more offensively than we would have liked and turned the ball over, which is not like us. But we can get those things corrected. But uh, feels good to win the ball game. I think Tulsa's got a pretty good football team. How good remain to be seen, just like us. But uh, yeah, to win the game is um, obviously the deal, and, and, and we're very, very excited. And, 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 and I think it, it pumps everybody up, myself included. Well, I know it must be good to have mm -hmm. that first one under your belt just because there's so many unknowns, just like the Colorado and Tennessee game to open the season. Lots of turnovers there. You don't know how your players are going to react. You had some some young players uh, playing in their first big-time college football game. So and now you can <coughs> you can judge some things now, can't you? Robbie, and the early opener. Again, this is the earliest time any Oklahoma State football team has ever played, if I'm not mistaken. So right. uh, you combine that with the youth and the uncertainties going into any opener. And, yeah, I think we managed things fairly well. We had a, a few guys get uh, a little bit overworked up, but that's part of it. Uh, but I think considering, I think everything went fairly smoothly. Okay. Great way to start the season is – Oklahoma State wins their season opener, beating Tulsa 10-3. When the Pat Jones Show continues, we'll come back with first quarter highlights. As Coach mentioned, it was the earliest season opener in Cowboy history, and, and Pat, I think it might have also been the hottest season opener. I think when we kicked off, it was about 113 degrees down there. And somebody told me the temperature was about 100, and obviously down there in that AstroTurf it's going to be much hotter than that. Tulsa had won the toss and elected to defer the decision to the second half. And you can see them kicking off here. And I could not tell whether they were trying to kick away from uh, Mayfield uh, or just a guy miss hit it. Uh, Mike Clark gets it, and we've got fairly good field position. Robbie, we had gone in saying we were going to try to mix up the formations on them a little bit, try to show them a little bit of motion and stuff. You can see Brent Parker going across there and then kind of try to bloody their nose a little bit with the inside running game of Hudson Brown and Cecil Wilson. I think we kind of succeeded in that. Uh, here's a sweep, and you can see Gerald almost came out of that one right there. We're going to see it again. Hudson's in pretty good shape. I, we didn't really know exactly how, or didn't have a feel for exactly how many carries we wanted to get him, depending upon the tone of the ball game. When things started unraveling, we were playing pretty good defensively. We just kept on pumping the ball to him. Uh, Gerald's a quality back, I mean, sure the, the, uh, and, and he's in pretty good shape. He's, I think he's about 203. He had reported about 207, which is a little bit heavy. Here's Cecil Wilson right here, and, and Cecil is, uh, they'd stunned it into that and stuff is pretty good right there. Cecil's pretty good back in his own right. We actually busted, uh, Cecil got a little bit confused there. Chris did a great job of getting this ball off. Brent Parker did a nice job. Yeah, that's not an easy throw coming there. Well, it's really not, well, but it's, it makes it even harder when you turn the end loose, like Cecil does. See this guy right here, that makes <laughs> it a lot harder, face, yeah, right. yeah when, when somebody just drills you when you throw the ball. But again, uh, uh, Chris did a nice job of getting it off try to keep the passing game fairly simple early on. Here you can see Gerald, no place to run. Tulsa played uh, pretty hard defensively. Again, they've got eight seniors on their defensive unit, uh, and, and they, they came out and got after us pretty good. This was fourth down play right here, fourth and two. I thought we were running the ball on them and went ahead and went for it at midfield. Uh, again, we've got a, a fairly good short yardage package. You get in the power eye and put Kenny Ford in at quarterback, and you got the possibility of running some option stuff, and Kenny came in and pitched the ball off here and did a nice job. We run the option here and Chris keeps the ball. Doesn't make very much. Uh, 
But the stuff with the option back to the short yardage stuff, I think gives us a nice little combination of stuff. Here's Gerald. Nice move, Gerald Hudson. He does not get knocked back very much because he's so doggone strong, uh, really, in his upper and lower body. Right. He is tremendously, tremendously strong. He's got uh, those happy feet, boy. He can really make those. Well, feet. the good ones really do, and I, I'm not saying he's quite yet of the magnitude of some we've other, some of these other guys we've had around here. But he's a he's a pretty solid back. Now again, he's got ten more ball games to go in his career. And needs right. to be able to do that throughout and stay healthy and do the things that a quality back needs to do. This is a nice cut right here. Uh, but you, you can tell most of the time he does a great job of getting his shoulder pads down and, and getting up the field, and he can make you miss. Here's a draw play. Now, this uh, this was the thing that probably irritated me the most. Gerald has not been a fumbler throughout his career. Uh, Vernon Brown has had a little bit of trouble with that sometimes. Now, here we, here we are on defense. They open the game with a little bit of shift and some motion. Uh, I think we adjusted well. Satterwhite made a good play. Uh, here they throw one, they drop it out here. The three-step stuff is, is fairly safe, and they've done it. And he normally does, Ruben does a good job of executing that. This is, I think, the, probably the difference in the ball game. One of the differences, they really never successfully ran the ball on us. Uh, Adams. That's, uh, he's a good back. Too. Yeah, he's a quality back. Good, tough guy that's a good football player. You know, he was a thousand yard rusher last year. Come on, David Brooks, wrap up a little bit better. Uh, Brooks played pretty well, missed a tackle here. Here's Chris coming out. We're throwing our own quick stuff. And, Brent Parker does a nice job of getting it down. Uh, you can see the counter play again to Hudson, and he can weave and, and dip and dodge like you say, Robbie. He's got happy feet and he can he can move them pretty fast. And you can see we're we're changing formation. If this ball didn't get tipped, we had we thought what we wanted on the outside with a little screen. Come in, punt the ball well. Blanchard punted I think throughout the afternoon for a 40 plus average. Our right. coverage units played good. Great play right there, men. Charles Verner. Uh, Fred Gaines, our coverage units uh, really did a good job throughout. Here again, they're trying to run inside, nothing. Reuben Oliver might have played one of his better ball games since he's been with us. He made several big plays, again, we expect him to. Right here, they're trying to uh, run some play action, and get him outside, and, and, and this this is not, we almost intercepted this. Charles Vernon right. made a nice break. Uh, in, in my opinion, or our opinion, you know, Rubley is, this is not one of the things that he does best as far as running around throwing, and I think the guy is a good, a very good quarterback, and he's been at his best when he can kind of sit back in there and read coverages. Come on, Charles, we should have had this ball caught. But good break. Again, Werner was aggressive early on. We've got an extra defensive back in the ball game. Come on, George Bratt. Now you can see Ruble actually scrambles. I think makes a first down here. Paid for it a little bit there at the end. Uh, but the, the we had some guys zinging around. Again, uh, here you can see us, and, and and sometimes you really don't worry as much about it. Come on, Clarence Nobles, get him. Now Clarence misses him, but. Uh, Ruby does a nice job of getting the first down. Mike Hart blasts him pretty good here. Now they're coming back, and, and, and here's now Clarence Nobles, great play. Nobles has, has got a fairly good nose for the football. 44, he sniffed this out pretty well. Red shirt freshman. Yeah, he's a second year freshman. I think he's really going to be a good football player, too. Uh, here we are again with uh, Vernon Brown in the ball game. We had a couple of motion penalties early, early. We had more throughout the course of the ball game than you would like. Uh, some of the young linemen got a little bit antsy, and that's to be expected. One thing I think we've got to do a better job of is getting the ball to Curtis Mayfield more. I mean, he had this, he had that guy turned all around, and uh, I think Curtis. The one thing that appeared to me watching the films is that Curtis can get open when he wants to, which he he normally will. And he ran a great route there, and you can see the respect they have for his speed because they were backed off of him. Nice job uh, uh, here. Come on, Robert Kirksey, let's get the ball caught. Tulsa banged him around in the secondary. Uh, a little bit, we should have had the ball caught. Here's a sprint draw. Here's Gerald uh, making a nice little run here. But you, what we've done, you can see in the throwing game so far has been fairly simple. Again, this is a nice scramble by Chris Smith. Come on, Chris, that's a way to make you miss. Now let's get what you can, get in and protect the football. Uh, pretty good run. Well, coach. you know, he had actually done this because back a couple years ago in the Holiday Bowl, right. you know, he made a couple of nice scrambles and actually was a little bit more creative than, than, than you might have thought sometimes. But Chris, again, he's not a burner, but he's he, Chris has got pretty good instincts running the ball. Again, take care of the football and let's get down. All right here we are, turn around, tossing on the sweep. Uh, not much. They run us back from the backside. But again, you can see how strong Hudson is that he runs through a lot of tackles. If somebody doesn't do a good job of getting him wrapped up, now he will will run away from you. Tulsa swarming the ball pretty good. I mean, they're there, and there's a reason they were they were in the Independence Bowl last year, and one of the reasons they've got a fairly solid defensive football team. 
Here's Chris coming back. Well, threw just a little bit behind Curtis right here. If we could have gotten this ball just out front of him a little bit, there's Robert Allen. Robert Allen. Yeah, there's Robert trying Good to figure hands, out there. Huh? Hey, this was, I'll tell you something that happened here. I thought it was pretty significant, Robbie. I don't think we have a replay of it. Barry Vincent, who's a walk-on holder for us from Morrison in his first game. Scott Gregory, our snapper on the field goal and extra points, has is, is been around. But uh, this was a little bit of a high snap, and Vincent got it down. And great break here by Mike Clark. Vincent got the, the hole down, and Blanchard is a good enough athlete to kind of even he had to stutter to, to, he went ahead and nailed it through. Good break here by Mike Clark as repeat. I, you know, again, Mike is a very, is a, is a is in great condition. I think he's very confident. There's a little play action. They throw it back in here. Again, we've got a lot of people around the football. There's Fleshman around the ball, Richie Ainsley around the ball. Now it's three to nothing, Oklahoma State. And that's the way the first quarter ends. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. Fellas, football's the most demanding sport. That's why my guys drink 10K. Now hang on there. No football player can pound the hardwood with my guys. They're the ones that deserve 10K. You mean to tell me a bunch of guys prancing around their underwear work up the kind of thirst my men do? Tell them, Pat. Hey, Pat, whose side are you on? Football. You know, this is the first time we've ever agreed on anything. 10K, the thirst quencher with a great taste even Gatorade drinkers prefer. Wait a minute. There are no beaches in Oklahoma. Welcome back to the Pat Jones Show. Uh, Coach, seemed like an awful lot of confidence on the part of the Cowboys. I think Tulsa only had like 22 yards total offense in that first quarter. We seem to be able to move the ball pretty well and stop them. Robbie, I think as the, as the game started unfolding, I think our defensive unit started to gain confidence. Uh, you know, there's, they slipped down here a little bit on that, but Joe King had a nice break. Uh, one of the differences, see, we, there's, there's, I think Jason Gilden, that a boy, Jason, this is a true freshman who likes to play the game. You can see how he's reacting right there. And it batted the ball down. Here's a replay. Uh, we've got people around in the throwing lane. I mean, this is athletic ability right here. And again, this guy is probably going to be better and just pretty good if he can stay healthy. And we boys start after a punt count. You start at your own 25. Again, Tulsa, you know, gave us some bad plays and they had some pressure. Nice job, Chris, hanging in there, throwing to Ronnie Fisher. <clears throat> again, basically, Simple stuff in the throwing game, changing the formations around a little bit. Here, here's, here's Chris going back now. Now we're trying to go downtown on. We thought Curtis could run by him, which I think he can basically run by anybody. Uh, we got lined up actually a little bit wrong. Here's another possession, and they ran right into it. Uh, but they really never had much success in the running game. Uh, this kind of stuff here, they fooled Gildon, but you can see what Gildon's got speed. And, and that won't happen to him. It'll happen to him once, but it won't happen to him very much throughout the course of his career. Good job, Richie Ainsley. Good, good effort on Gildon's part. They never really sprung anything in the running game. There's George Bright, uh, Reuben Oliver around the ball. Uh, and I think that was probably the difference. Hey, here we go, Clarence Nobles. This is real football right here now. Seemed like you had a lot of guys around the ball. Well, uh, we did. And, and, and I think that's, you know, indicative somewhat athletic ability. I'm not saying we got a bunch of first round draft choices out there because we're obviously very young, but this kind of stuff mm. right here, I mean, this is a great face up tackle and Clarence is strong. And now they hit a little crack here and Adams is, he's strong himself and, and makes a first down. Uh, Tulsa's uh, got a little bit of a drive going. Uh, you can see how strong Adams ran over uh, Richie Ainsley right there. But again, we've got a lot of guys around taking a shot at him here. They're just trying to hammer him. Not much there. There's this Eric, is a big stand. You though. bet it was. Boom, right here. This is a great job, fellas. This is what it's all about. It's a replay coming up. Now, you can see our guys are gaining confidence. Not that we have didn't have any, but this is real defense right here. Bang, and Adams is strong. He's a veteran back who's a strong guy. You can you got a lot of guys scratching and clawing to, to get to the football. Big Fourth play. Down. Great play, Joe King. I don't know whether it was a fumble or not. They did not rule that it was a fumble, and <clears throat> I know our guys were hollering up there in the press box, thought we had gotten a bad spot. Who knows? They ended up, did not make the thing, but uh, again, I thought the whistle had blown, but who knows? They didn't make it. And they come out with the measurement, and they're a little bit short. The Cowboys have held. This was really a good defensive stand. This Absolutely. does wonders for us. Again, now we're in the power eye, the short yardage stuff with Kenny Ford in the ball game. <clears throat> and I, this stuff here, Kenny, Kenny is a pretty good football player, particularly doing this kind of stuff. And he gets thrown in again when you're coming out of your own end zone or going in in tough spots. Okay, now Chris is back in, and we're just kind of hammering away with the tailbacks and fullbacks. Here we are back in the power stuff. Gerald, sometimes he, he told me at halftime he thought he could make a big play. We got to get a feel for what you need for, to make the first down. Just make a first down and keep the drive alive. Here they are on the possession now. Nice play, Reuben Oliver. 
Here's Rubley back out of boy. Stacy Satterwhite, <clears throat> excuse me, they uh they have a bust in their protection here and turn Satterwhite loose. See, they just Didn't one of them turns it. out and the other one steps down and turns Satterwhite loose. We were doing some stuff defensively we hadn't done in, in part in several years. It's good play on George Bright's part outside. Come on, get a hold of him, George. Keep a hold of him, Stafford. Now you can see it Bright again, his mobility, and, 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 and there's a replay coming up. This we had people around him. That a boy, George. Hold on to him now, but he sees staying after him. Come on, George Stafford, and George has got great closing ability and a great burst. And I think this might have been the difference. We did have people zinging around it. Great crowd, and the crowd got fired up. Here's our own little play action. Uh, overthrew it right here. Tulsa had it covered pretty well. Uh, you can see we're in some one-back stuff. Uh, uh, nice job, Chris. Nice job of getting the, the pass off. Uh, we're just a little bit short. I thought Chris did a great job, Robbie, of playing it within himself. I mean, we, I thought Jeff Byron, our offensive coach, he did a great job of not asking him to do maybe too much too early. Here's a draw play. Uh, come on, Cecil, this was a good call. Uh, you know, it, it looked like he might have been blown dead. He wasn't. I saw it. They made a good, ball, good call. We got to do a better job of, of protecting the football. We got people around there. Good break by Mike Clark. Good break by Fleshman. They threw in behind him a little bit. Here's their own play action. Uh, overthrows. We've got guys covered. I think our under coverage did a good job. Our deep defenders did a good job. Here we go. We, you know, this, we got a good break there by Fleshman. We had that covered pretty well. I don't think they really ever had guys running loose in the secondary, which is the first time that's happened in a couple of years. Here's Gerald. You know, he's taking pretty good shots and again getting upfield. Uh, here we go again. Now we turn somebody loose and he doesn't get much, but at least he is getting positive yards. I don't think he, he really ever had negative yards all night long. Again, Chris, I've said this before, but Chris had a very good grasp of the tone of play of what was going on around him. Here's this little play action right here. Chris is doing a good job. That a boy, Scott Copeland, get up the field. Nice throw, nice catch. That's 16 yards. I think that was the longest play of the game. Well, Coach. you know, certainly we've got to get some more big plays. We don't want to try to force them, just kind of start letting it happen. And, Things will occur, but nice job of Chris, nice throw, nice catch, good job of getting up the field by Scott Copeland, and the Cowboys have got a first down. Here's Chris dumping it off, going Gerald, make a guy miss, pull out of that, and let's go. He'll get some big plays in, in the throwing game of dumping the ball off, but uh, half ended, you know, I, we, we kind of thought about going downtown one time deep at, uh, right at the end of the half, Robbie, but you know, we just kind of wanted to let the clock run out and let's get in with a three-point lead. So obviously the Cowboys are still ahead and playing pretty well. We'll be back with halftime right after this. We're at halftime of the season opener. Oklahoma State out in front of Tulsa, three to nothing. And Pat, that, that first half, almost all of it was played in Tulsa territory. Well, I thought our guys were in a great frame of mind, both on the field and in the locker room, Robbie. Uh, we had fumbled the ball twice, which upset us a little bit. Again, we had a couple of penalties. But defensively, again, with that stand down in there, and we were zinging around pretty good, <clears throat> we felt pretty good about ourselves. Obviously, knowing it's still very, very much a ball game, and anybody's ball game at this point. But our emotions and our spirits were, were really at a, at a very good level. Again, I think our confidence level started growing really throughout the first half into halftime and, and carried over into the second half. Okay, let's take a look at some of the numbers. Uh, uh, of the first half, uh, Oklahoma State pretty much dominating play, uh, leading first downs, uh, able to rush the ball for 100 yards, get a little bit done in the passing game. You do have the two two turnovers. Well, the really only thing, again, that upsets a little bit is the two turnovers. You see Tulsa's only got three first downs and uh, not enough offense really to tell it. And, you know, and I think our defensive people were. They were, we were, they were gaining momentum. I mean, we had run the ball fairly effectively. Uh, Tulsa had kept us under wraps. The time of possession, which we don't see here, was very much in our favor. But... Again, we felt pretty good about ourselves at this point. Um, was the uh, Rubley to me just never seemed to really be comfortable out there? Right? Well, you're getting some pressure on. We him. had some pressure on him. I think it was some of our, us and then some of them a little bit. I, mm -hmm. You without bits and I and they had had a couple like say a drop right. or two and some guys slipped down. I had the impression that he didn't feel real comfortable with his receiver core. But again, I think we had a little something to do with it. We were breaking around. We had had our hands on a couple, had batted a couple down, and had in George Brighton, some of those guys that had some pressure on him. So I think it's a little bit of a combination of us and them both. How about, uh, real quickly, how about the heat at halftime? How, how did you feel the heat was affecting the, the ball club? I thought our guys were, were thinking positive about it. Again, we had driven this point home through our conditioning and all this. This was going to be crucial. I don't even think we changed T-shirts at halftime. I'll be darned. All right. Oklahoma State out in front of Tulsa, 3-0 at halftime. When the Pat Jones Show continues, we'll come back with third quarter highlights. You stay with us.
Tulsa had the option to start the second half and coach uh, Kerry Blanchard. I think uh, every time he kicked, I think it went into the end zone. I thought he did a good job. Well, he's very powerful. He's obviously a, a very good kicker. I, you get punted the ball well, kicked the ball through or into the end zone basically every time. Here's Tulsa coming out trying to establish some things running game-wise. Richie Ainsley, nice play. They really never did outflank us. Never did. Uh, here they are trying to attack us here. Great job of Gildon. Great job. Uh, David Brooks on the backside. Good job. Richie Ainsley. Again, uh, did not ever have much success with it. Here they're trying a little shuffle pass. Great play by Reuben Oliver. You know, they, they had run this fairly successfully on us a couple of years ago. Tried to run it one time and it jumped off sides early in the ball game. Great play. You know, this when you're running up the field, this, you're susceptible to some of this stuff. Good play, Reuben. That's a way to hold on. Now we've got the ball. At your uh, own 40. At our own 40. Nice job here. Uh, Chris had the option to run or throw. And, uh, good job, Chris Smith. Let's let's not get yourself banged around too very much. We just get out of bounds and get down. But I think you called this three times during the course of the well, game. Well, we called it? it here early on, and then when it got late, when we did feel like that we had control of it, and we really did not necessarily want to throw the ball. This is fairly safe stuff. Again, you got a chance to either stay in bounds or get out of bounds and misdirection. Particularly as much as we've been running the tailback, you got a chance with uh, the misdirection stuff. And Tulsa run it some themselves. Okay, Chris threw in behind him a little bit here on the on the on the slant. Okay, now we're going back, and this is a great play. This is a great great play. It had right in front of me. I could not see Curtis catch the ball. Uh, we're going to see a replay of it. Uh, Chris did a good job of, of moving around a little bit here. He's feeling some pressure uh, by Richard Wales, and, and, and he's running. And now Chris, I was looking right at him and, and didn't see again what was happening down the field. Great job Mayfield to get your feet down. Big play, big first down play. And here's the counter again to Hudson and, and taking shots, but he's not he's not getting knocked back. I, uh, Tulsa was given, now they're giving us quite a few different looks. Nice throw, nice catch by Ronnie Fisher. They gave us a blitz look. Chris actually came and checked to this, uh, dumped it off nicely. Nice catch, Ronnie Fisher. You know, Fisher's a fairly versatile guy. Plays tailback, plays what you call H-back or, or that kind of third wide receiver, kind of a tweener guy. Now, when Tulsa's taking the ball, uh, we, we punted. A big play had occurred, right? We didn't get it, but we killed the ball. I think Fred Gaines, Derek Jones made a great play to kill the punt on the three. Now, Tulsa's trying to run it out of their end zone. and Again, it was a long, hard day, uh, basically, for them trying to run the ball. Here he over th throws this one. That guy made a nice, uh, I don't know, did he catch that ball or not? I can't no. remember. He did not. Incomplete. But the big play that had occurred was us killing the ball inside the five. Here's the option. Pitch out here to Vernon Brown. Come on, Vernon, let's get on down. Uh, again, we've got some option game. It's not something we feature a great deal, but it is something that we have got. Vernon, when he gets outside of somebody, I mean, he can he can cut and slash pretty good himself. Tulsa's fighting us hard. I mean, they they played I, I played a little bit harder, really, quite honestly, after watching the films, and I thought they might have defensively throughout. Good job of Cecil Wilson. We had given him a little bit of a shift here and ran a full back up inside, and you can see here, nice job of blocking in the interior. Um, you know, we've seen Cecil do this some throughout his career. You get him headed down the field, I mean, he'll punish somebody trying to tackle him. Okay, here's a nice job, nice cut by Gerald Hudson. Uh, that, that boy, that's a good job, Gerald. And Tulsa's fighting hard. I'll give their defensive unit credit. They, they battled they battled pretty hard. Nice job. See, I mean, you better be in position to tackle this guy. Uh, you see, he's already run through about three people. Take care of that football and get down. And uh, again, tell you, we got people around the ball, and so does TU. All right, nice cut. Okay, that a boy, they banged him around. It's one of the few times he did get turned backwards. But you know, Tulsa's playing hard. Tulsa's playing pretty hard right here. Nice run, that a boy, Gerald. That's a way to rip into the end zone. We're going to see it again. I thought your offensive line did a good job on this drive. This, this so, we had things opened up again. Cecil did a nice job of blocking it. Gerald did a great job of throwing his body into the end zone. Ten to nothing. You're feeling you're feeling somewhat secure. Really, the only thing that could have gotten us in trouble did was us turning the ball over. Uh, but uh, I thought really at this point, uh, given any field position, Tulsa would have an awfully hard time beating us. Again, here's, here's some play action. We've got him flushed out. He's moving around. Uh, we've actually got some people out in front of him. He tried to throw it. Uh, uh, you know, you're not going to get an interference call basically on a scramble. I don't think we really did right here. Here you go, okay, try another little screen. We've got it sniffed out pretty good. There's Ruben around there. There's Stacy Satterwhite around. Uh, again, you know, Rubley is, is, it does a pretty good job of executing offense because he ought to. He's a, he's a fourth year senior that started virtually every ball game. He's a good, solid player. And we had guys in position. Here's just a simple little handoff to Cecil Wilson, and we're making uh, four yards. Okay, here we go, a little play action. I'm sorry, giving the ball off to Gerald. 
We had some busts in the offensive line, like you're going to particularly in, in an opener. But uh, I thought we did a fairly good job. And I didn't really notice that we were getting tired in the offensive line. I thought we were doing a pretty good job. That's a way to run strong. Uh, and we got There's some things that we got to get corrected, which we will. All right, here's a little play action uh, right here over through Mayfield. Uh, now we're here again, a one back set going back. Uh, you know, we got to again get a little bit of fine tuning here on this screen game. And Blanchard's going to come in, and again, he did a good job of punting. Uh, you know, I thought our coverage units did an awfully nice job of things. So, uh, you know, here we go. He hit this one. That's a 52 yard punt, folks. He, Tulsa he, takes over at their own 20. Well, we, we again, if we keep them bottled up, uh, we're going to have a chance to win. Here's Rubley rolling out. Uh, guns this ball in there pretty good. I mean, that was yeah, good. It's that nice, was a nice throw and catch. Yard pickup. You bet. Okay, here they're trying to run the sweep. Cannot get us out flank. That's the way to hustle Eric Garman. That's the way to get around the football men. Uh, you can see Garman's a guy that's 59. You can see him run. That a boy, Eric. That's a nice. nice job here. He's got some ability. This guy's coming on pretty good. I'm really proud of. We're really proud of what he's doing. Nice play by Satterwhite. You know, Satterwhite's down in weight some. I think he's about 255, which is a pretty good weight for him. Uh, nice job, Richie Ainsley. Again, you know, he's kind of making a little bit of a shoestring tackle, but that still counts. So here's the play action. Going downtown, trying to go deep. Uh, Verner's in good position. Mike Clark's in great play, Mike Clark. That boy's last play of third quarter. Uh, I thought they might try to check out Verner down the middle a little bit more. Uh, he's firing the ball down here. Uh, Mike Clark had it played. Verner had it played. Mike does a good job of going up strong for the ball and getting it down. Big play in the ball game. Again, we're continuing to gain momentum defensively. Cowboy defense comes up with a turnover. Final play of the third quarter. Oklahoma State out in front of Tulsa. 10-0 fourth quarter coming up right after this. The Oklahoma State defense turned Tulsa back to end the third quarter. So you've got the ball back. You're deep in your own territory. Want to make sure you hold on to that football. Well, that's, that's it, which was concerning me a little bit. But again, the, the interception, I think, just gave us a, another lift in momentum. Okay, here you go, Gerald trying to bounce it outside. Not much there, but good strong running. He picked up five, you know, second and five, you'll take that about every time. Again, at this point, uh, you know, we're just trying not to do anything silly. If we can just keep from turning the ball over, let's keep our composure there, fellas. Uh, okay, now here we go. Again, a little bit on the bootleg here. Nice job, Chris Smith. Had a boy, good job of things. Again, Chris came out and you know he he'd make a remark here and there, and uh, you can see this particularly as much as we've been running those tailbacks. This thing was open, and Chris did a nice job of getting around, and that a boy picking up the first down and getting up eleven. You bet, good job, men. Uh, and Chris was doing a good job of relaying information to us on the sidelines as far as what he liked and what he felt pretty good about. Come on, Vernon, get down now, Vernon. Yeah, like I say, the only thing that could have got them back in the ball game did. I mean, we, you know, we, I think we'll probably do some ball protection drills here a little bit this week. Threw it out there, not much. Uh, Jay Fleshman had him. Nice little throw and catch on their part, but uh, uh, Fleshman had the thing covered. Again, here's their own play action with Rubley moving around. Well, this, this, this is a heck of a play right here. This is a great, great football play. Joe King. Might have been the difference in the ball game. I could a lot of, you can say it probably about a lot. This is a big time play. I saw it, I was looking right down the sidelines and, and, and this was a great break on Joe King's part. He had the coverage, everything was in place. Again, uh, you know, here Rubley is, is rolling around. There's really not any place for him to throw the ball. You can see now he's, he's into a pure scramble situation. Garman's bearing down on him. He fires, great break, Joe King. Great job. This was a very big play. We had somebody else around the football. Uh, well, the crowd really was warming up to our defense. They, they had throughout tonight. That a boy, Gerald. He's probably about one guy. That's a way to just take care of the football. Umpire got run over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but, but again, you can see Gerald's, Gerald's gaining strength, uh, which is the way the good ones will. I mean, they're not going to wilt. They're going to get stronger. You move those shoulders around and spin and take care of that football and get positive yardage. Oh, the offensive front opened a, a nice running lane up for him. All right, okay, here's Cecil. Come on, Cecil, that's that boy, take care of that football. Uh, again, you know, you, you know, I, I've said this several times, you had three fifth year seniors, each of which fumble, which is, again, not part of the overall plan, and, but we'll get that taken care of here. But he's, we're just hammering it out, uh, running simple stuff. Here's a sprint draw. He came within about an ankle tackle right there. Good job, Robert Kirksey. I thought our receivers did a nice job of blocking all throughout the night. Uh, Mayfield, Kirksey, uh, Brent Parker, we had some, I think we had some of their secondary people on the ground, I and mean, this is part of it. 
As you can see, Robert Kirk has got number 22 knocked down. It's a great job, Robert. Okay, here we are, counter play. They had some penetration. And take care of the football, fellas. Uh, but uh, you know, we're moving it, uh, trying to keep it away from them. Uh, nice job, Gerald Hudson, again. So I, the, part, the good thing about this, again, is, is you know, we're, we're, we're doing a pretty good job here. This was the only thing, you know, we had third down and maybe should have thrown it away. Probably been better off if you could have thrown the ball away. Come on in here, Blanchard. Now our coverage people do a pretty good job. Carry unloaded on this one. Oh, he hit it pure as he could. Watch the coverage people are down there. That's a way to shake them up, fellas. That a boy, Fred Gaines. Uh, good job, Charles Verner. You know, they, they broke one little punt return, but we had people around the football. Of course, again, they still got it out around midfield. And got some time left, not anything right there. They're kind of stumbling and falling. Again, I didn't, I didn't think that, that really, you know, you always worry about this, but we had enough guys around the football banging them around. Uh, you're going to see Mike Clark and Jay Fleshman and do this quite frequently. Here's a three-step stuff, which you can't rush real good. He throws it outside, and bang, there's Jay. Bang, there's Mark. And uh, Mike, I mean, again, got great breaks on the football. Okay, here we go. We've got some pressure. David Brooks has got him. Gildon's bearing down from the backside. He's scrambling around. Boom, he gets hit pretty good right here. Uh, that a boy, Fleshman. Jay, Fleshman yeah, can strike a blow. Yeah, Jay's in great physical condition. I think he's got great confidence in himself. And, now we then they, they kind of froze Jay. Look at his fourth down play right there. Nice throw and catch on their part. They pick up the first down because again it's still kind of iffy. They got the ball on our side of midfield and come on fellas, let's wrap up here a little bit. Uh, Michael Woolridge missed a few more tackles than, than, than he's used to, which he will. He did a great job of greasing this ball in here on the slant. But see, they got it down at about our 20, and you know it's, it's still very very much a football game right here. Just just dropped it, you know, just dropped it. Of course, that's part of the game. If you're going to win a close ball game, you probably got to make those plays. All right here again, counter play. Good job, Reuben Oliver. That a boy, Michael Woolridge. Repeat here again. I, this might have been one of Reuben's uh, most complete ball games. I really thought he showed up here. You can see him from the inside. This is a nice job, Reuben. That's a way to lay out and go after it. This was a nice play right here. Good position by Woolridge. So, but, but they've got the ball at the 20-yard line. Here he's going back and throwing it. Okay, Joe King had it. I don't know what they, I thought it, I, they had a good call and blew it down back yeah, in there. Blew it down. Uh, but again, now, yeah, we had pretty good coverage on. Here they run inside and boom, wrap him up, fellas. Let's let's wrap up now. Uh, but they've got you can see they've got the ball inside the 10 yard line. Four and a half minutes left. Tried to run the shotgun and, and snapped it down. I think they had a little screen working or something right here. He flips it back across. Adams catches it. Nice play. That a boy, Richie Ainsley. Again, Ainsley is. He and Nobles have got a fairly good feel for things. They tried to run the shotgun again, um, uh, mishandled the snap. Uh, Gildon's right around him. Uh, we've got our, our, some of our faster pass rushers in the ball game. Dropped another one. Of course, again, the timing of those slants and everything is not the easiest thing in the world, and Rubley does normally a good job of throwing it. Seals comes in the ball game and hit this one nice. Uh, now it's 10 to three, and it's, uh, they're still very much alive. 47-yard field goal by Seals, Oklahoma State. Uh, now has their lead cut 10 to three. Cowboys uh, start at their own 25. Hudson picks up three. And we need to hammer out some first downs in here. Again, we don't want to do anything real cute. a boy, Gerald, that's the way to run the football. But they made a mistake here, uh, Coach. You saw the yeah, dirty laundry yeah. in the air, dead ball foul against Tulsa. And, and again, I, I thought it was a good call. It happened right in front of me, and that's, that's kind of vague, but uh, here we, we turn about three guys loose, and they're stunting, gambling a little bit. Uh, you know, they could have got one right there for taunting. Okay, here we go. Now we run another little bootleg. Now, Chris, again, he is making a conscious effort to stay in bounds and keep the clock alive. And again, this is this is as far as management of the game. This is what the quarterback has got to do. Okay, here again, here's the lead. He almost broke out of this and scored. I, he almost came out of that. If he could have gotten by one more and scored. Things are winding down. We're able to kill the clock. Oklahoma State wins 10-3. to three and. Everybody's happy. Absolutely. Cowboys win the season opener, uh, beating Tulsa uh, 10 to 3. And coach, uh, some of the guys that I talked to uh, during the course of the ball game, um, I asked him about how, how was Chris doing mm -hmm. uh, in this situation. I mean, he's paid sure. his dues, been sure. around for a while. And uh, they all said that he uh, was real poised and was in control of the situation. Well, one of the things that you know, worried me a little bit, you know, we're doing some fairly complicated stuff with substitutions. I mean, we're trying to get some guys in and try to match them with what they do best. And I was asking our people, our offensive linemen, when they were coming out of the ballgame, hey, is the huddle running smooth? Yes, mm -hmm. Chris has got a great command of things. 
everything's going on again. We had remarked about his feel for the tone of play. So really proud of what Chris Smith got done. Okay, proud to, to get a victory too. So let's, let's take a look at the final stats here as Oklahoma State wins the season opener, uh, beating Tulsa. And really, um, the score was uh, closer than the stats would indicate. Oklahoma State really kind of dominated the ball game. The defense doing an outstanding job. But uh, big margin and first downs. Uh, uh, Gerald Hudson with a big night, uh, Cowboys rushing for 230 yards, 290 total yards, and I know uh, that 159 for Tulsa, that's got to make you feel pretty good. You know, it, again, obviously the, the main stat is one on the scoreboard. I think right. that is the lowest total offense that we've had, that we've allowed anybody since the 1986, our win over Iowa State in the season finale that year. Again, we got, we got plenty enough things that we can work on, but we also got a lot of positives to build upon. Sure, we got to cut down in the turnovers. We got to execute things better. We need to tackle a little bit better in spots. But, you know, we came away from, with a win, and I think Tulsa competed hard. This was a big ball game for both schools. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about that. Uh, so, again, I think things really happened the way they needed to happen. We were pressed when we needed to get pressed, and you obviously thrilled that you win the ball game. All right. Oklahoma State. Uh, starts the season, winning the season opener, beating Tulsa by a score of 10 to three. The Pat Jones Show will continue right after this. Anytime you win a ball game, there are gonna be big plays on both sides of the football, but uh, we felt the Oklahoma State defense uh, really dominated the Tulsa game and, and our play of the week comes from the defensive side of the football. Uh, it happened early in the fourth quarter, uh, Joe King, Defensive back comes up with a big play as Tulsa's threatening. We had talked about a little bit earlier. Again, this is this was a very, very a, a big play when it occurred. They've got the ball in the end of the field, got a chance to do something. Uh, Joe King from Dallas South Oak Cliff makes a great break and a great play. Uh, you can see in down there play action. We've done a good job with the initial coverage. Uh, he, uh, Rubley's wanting to throw right here and there's nobody open. Now he starts scrambling. We've got people coming up in front of him, people from behind him. He tries to grease it in. Joe King makes a great a break, and Mike Clark's right there with him, and Joe King gets down in immensely big play. I thought uh, I talked to Bill Miller, your defensive coordinator, after the game, and, and uh, he said, now, don't, don't make any mistake here. We're very pleased with the defensive effort. We're not about to say that we're a great defensive ball club right now, but uh, there were some big plays on the defensive well, it side. Well, sure was, Rob. And again, we've got a lot of things to build off sure. of. I mean, this defensive unit has got, we got a few veteran guys around. And I think there's quite a bit of pride that has started to emerge in that group. We thought we'd seen it in practice. You get a performance like this, again, you've got a lot of positive things to build with. Okay. Um, this was the first full weekend of uh, big time college football. There were uh, three Big Eight conference games. Why don't we take a look and see what happened on Saturday, September 1, Oklahoma State beating Tulsa 10 to 3. Look out, Kansas, uh, the, uh, the uh, Cavaliers kind of got them, uh, 59 to 10, and, and Nebraska shuts out Baylor 13 nothing. That's a bit of a surprise. Well, I tell you, the one that surprised me, I, I thought Baylor, from what we've been hearing, is pretty good. Baylor had a pretty good defensive unit last year. I was surprised Kansas got hammered like they did. Virginia has uh, certainly apparently got a pretty good football team. I wouldn't think they'd be that good, though. But that surprised me that, that Kansas got beat that sound. It's got to be very, very sobering for them. Mm. Baylor did have a chance against Nebraska, but Nebraska's got a very strong defensive football team. Right, two good defensive football teams, apparently, in that ball game. Uh, the Pat Jones Show will continue right after this. You stay with us. Welcome back to the Pat Jones Show. More than 41,000 spectators showed up for the season opener, and there was one gentleman watching the game who is not only greatly interested in Cowboy football, but all Oklahoma State athletics. The Oklahoma State University Athletic Department took a new direction this summer with the hiring of 47-year-old Jim Garner. The native Texan came to OSU after an eight-year stint as athletic director at Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina. Garner is a family man, father of three daughters. For more than 20 years, Garner has been a part of administrative staffs at four universities. When the OSU job became available, Garner knew it was a job he wanted. Professionally, the challenge. I had, uh, if I just wanted to retire on the job, Robbie, or, or uh, enjoy life every day with no stress, I would stay where I was because we had our program going well. We were winning. We were sound. Financially, good things were happening, and it was a resort area in Boone where people pay to come visit, and I had the opportunity to live there the year-round. 
but I was looking for a professional challenge, but I wanted one in an area where I wanted to be, where I wanted to put my wife and family, and, and Oklahoma State certainly offered that challenge in, in that area, and I came after the job very high, hard. I don't, I don't hide that at all. Uh, there's been, I've had opportunities to leave before, did not want to, but this was a job that Jim Garner wanted, and I pulled out all the stops trying to get it. How would you prioritize the needs of the Oklahoma State Athletic Department? We're, uh, you know, we are really uh, financially bleeding to death right now. In fact, uh, almost from an artery rather than a vein. And we have to stop that and get it straightened around. I think the other thing that we have to change is the image uh, caused by the probation and the problems, not only just recent probation, but maybe things that went on for the last two decades. And I think we have to change that image out there. And I think our people want it changed. I have found out, Robbie, going around and speaking, uh, that our people, as they are across the country, I think are at a zero tolerance as far as the abuses in intercollegiate athletics. And I think we've got to get the message across to our people very loud, very clearly, that we're going to run this program right. We're going to run it in total compliance, not only with the letter of the law, but also the spirit of the law. Jim Garner's not a yes man. You know, I will stand up for what I believe in. Uh, I will fight for our program. And, you know, I don't care if it's the, the regents, the uh, state hierarchy, the administration, or whatever. I will always stand up and do what I feel is best for, first of all, our student athletes, and secondly, the people in this department, and then the university as a whole. Garner, the new athletic director at Oklahoma State, uh, uh, pretty some pretty strong comments there, Pat. And you and and uh, Oklahoma State head basketball coach Eddie Sutton had a chance to visit with uh, Mr. Garner, didn't you? In the uh, yeah, and, uh, obviously very much professional, really good guy, great family. I mean, we're very very thrilled to get him in here. I hope he wasn't talking about changing my image. I, I'm a really a nice guy, you know. But uh, <laughs> no argument. <there. laughs> but but anyway, seriously though, I, you know, we we are all very excited. You know, I'm the one that's been around here the longest, probably of anybody now. And, uh, you know, I'm very excited about Jim Garner. Been putting in 18 hour days. Been traveling around the state. The first guy I saw coming up the ramp last night after the ball game number one was Dr. Campbell, and right in front of him was Jim. And, and you know, feels comfortable around the athletes and the coaches. And we're very very excited about having Jim Garner on board. Okay, great. Uh, the Oklahoma State Cowboys have to go on the road for game two. We'll come back and talk about those Florida Gators right after this. It's your game two of the 1990 season. We'll see Oklahoma State go on the road to Gainesville, Florida to take on the Florida Gators. You got a new head coach down there, Pat. You got a new offense. You got a new defense. You got a grass field. What, what do you think of that? <clears throat> well, the interesting thing is, is Steve Spurrier, who is, um, I know, I don't know real well, uh, in his first game as a head coach, you know, Steve had won the Heisman Trophy down there as a quarterback uh, back in the late 60s. and yeah. uh, Favorite son type deal. Of course, that's always been a tough place to play. I know when I was at the University of Pittsburgh, Pitt had played there the year before <clears throat> and played in the tie ball game. They had always remarked about how loud it was. Uh, obviously, very, very rabid fans. Last year, defensively, they were among the leaders in the country in total defense. <clears throat> Certainly a new staff. A couple of their defensive coaches are guys from this part of the country. A guy named Jim Bates used to be at Texas Tech for years. Uh -huh. A guy named Tim Markham we used to deal with at Rice and Ranger Junior College. And I thought they're, they're pretty revved up guys. Uh, so I'm sure they'll fly around defensively. They've got a pass rush guy named Huey Richardson's outside linebacker type and uh, allegedly one of the, uh, the top pass rush people in the country had been rumored that was coming out early into the pro draft I wish he had it quite honestly but, uh, I think it would be safe to assume that Steve's background or what they had been doing with Duke uh, throw the ball around quite a bit uh, multiple formations they, they've got they have named a starter at quarterback I don't remember at this point what the youngsters name is uh, the grass won't be a factor for us again it'll be a tough situation crowd noise and everything else so again, we'll have to have our hitting gear on to go have a chance to win the ball. Okay, well congratulations on victory number one. Good luck to you as you go on the road to take on the University of Florida. Thank Thanks for being with us here on the Pat Jones Show. Hope you'll join us every week. Goodbye, everybody. The Pat Jones Show.